In the last three weeks, I built a powerful dialogue management tool to use in my game. With its visual navigation and easy to use dialogue language, I'm constantly finding myself zoned in on the writing with little to no distraction. And I'm actually excited to show it to you in its full detail. If anything, I'm looking forward to seeing your feedback on this. So let's jump into it. Hello, developer Ezra here. I'm currently working on a retro point and click inspired RPG game. At the start, things went smoothly and I had put enough pieces together to finally start on the writing. Here, let me explain my game a little. I want the players to build characters' backstory through a series of narrative decisions, and that very backstory would impact the character's current exploration with the world. In practice, it'll look like this. The player explores the world, and a decision unlocks a memory, and the player can play through the memory to further reveal the backstory, and the revelation unlocks more interaction with the world, and repeat. As you can see, every part of that core game loop involves dialogues. That's a lot of planning and writing, and I'm not about to manage all this as just walls of text in files after files and after files. Okay, I'll admit it. I did think initially that I could get away with the wall of text method, but look, in my defense, this was not a baseless decision. I had a good reason. In game development, or any product development for that matter, iteration is the key. I want to verify the ideas and execution of the game as early and frequently as possible. Because this brings perspective and addresses a lot of the assumptions I may have made, which I'm blind to, and this can make or break the game. I would hate to find out that I have chosen the wrong path after years of work has been put onto it. So how can I keep the iteration speed up while managing a complex web of dialogues? Well, I avoided answering the question for like a week. I knew what I had to do, but I had to let the thought brew a little bit in my head. To be fair, it wasn't all pure procrastination. I took the time to clear my head with several trips to my favorite coffee shop, then some dessert at the local bubble tea place. And when I ran out of places to go, I finally cleaned up my workspace. Now, I was frustrated at how with so little, so much of the space is already occupied on my table. It's not particularly messy, but still so full. I actually was pretty lost on what to do with it. I couldn't remove any more stuff, but with the help of awesome friends at Grove Made, I was able to find my missing piece, layers. Look, basically the only thing I added was this monitor shelf, but it saved so much space. And look, it also looks good. As someone who only knows how to make practical purchases, I was super happy to have a visually pleasing and clutter-free desk with just a practical shelf. I'll include the link to Grove Made in the description below, so check it out and you can get 10% off using the code Ezra10. Okay, so with my physical space cleaned, my mind freed, I was ready to build my dialogue plugin. Oh, it was a fun journey. Difficult one, but fun. Godot allows developers to develop plugins that extend the functionality of the editor, so I decided that's what I'm going to use. And rather than describing to you the nitty gritty of developing this tool, unless you want to hear it, then let me know so I can make a separate video on that the technical details, but let me just show you the result. To start, you create a dialogue node and you can just type text to display. And of course, we want to add choices so you can quickly type in the options and which dialogue node it should go to. Now, if I create a dialogue node with the same name, a line is drawn automatically showing that there is a connection. You can do the same for the other. I could have stopped there, but I wanted to build enough building blocks to enable me completely. So I added several more features like conditional statements. I can have a variable called is like and subscribe, and I can display different text based on the value of that variable. And you can see if I set the value to true here, when I run it, it says, thank you for liking and subscribing. And if I set the value to false, it says, please come back. And it supports all the usual conditional operations like ands and ors and all the other things you can imagine that a conditional statement should support. Also, what goes within this conditional block is not limited to just texts. For example, I could even transition to other dialogues conditionally. 
Another big feature is the signal command. I can send a signal, which is basically an event with a string parameter, and you can write a handler function that responds to the signal when the dialog execution hits that line. I use this to create a variable setter so I can modify variables within the dialog. But potentially, it is useful for any in-game logic, which is pretty cool. And I also added some display-related features like injecting variables so you can display the variable text. So here's an example. You can have a sentence like your name is player name. And once I set the value of the player name variable, it replaces it with that value. Lastly, a page break command. This is mainly used to separate the display text into multiple pages. And because it pauses the execution of the dialog when it hits the break, you can also make the signal command from before a blocking execution instead of an asynchronous one by adding the page break after the signal. So yeah, tons of stuff. And this definitely has been super helpful for me. And I'm wondering if this would be something that is helpful for some of you as well. So let me know if you would like to see this as either open source or um, maybe I could release it in the asset marketplace. Otherwise, let me know what you think. If you enjoyed this video, you can easily support the channel with likes and comments. They help out the channel so much. And if you're feeling extra generous, you can tip me at Ko-Fi or check out my affiliate link in the description. Thanks for watching and see you next time.